gosh, you guys, check this out. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of 1000 Hobbies. We're going camping again. We're going to this pretty cool, like, historic state park. I've been there once before, and it's kind of cool. The first time we ever took our trailer that we used to have camping was at this park, so it's kind of a little bit of a cool memory for me to go back there. I don't think we've been back since, so looking forward to it. Just got a little bit of snow on the ground. last night and uh, it's a little bit of a chilly one it's about 30 just above 30 degrees out but it should be a good time so looking forward to it here we go Choo! made it to our camp spot and just like I expected there's absolutely nobody here this is sick last time we were here there was nobody here I think we saw one other person especially when it's cold out like this nobody really comes to this place and it's like a legit campground which you guys know me I like staying out in kind of like the middle of nowhere if I can but I knew there'd be nobody out here pretty sick we've got a table already set up we've got a fire pit but we'll probably use our solo stove maybe I don't know we might use that fire ring that's pretty sweet. There's also uh, a restroom nearby, which is pretty sweet. And a hiking trail right over here. So we might go for a little bit of a hike, but we're gonna go check out the uh, kind of historic part of the park too. So time to unload. Okay, got the backpack on, ready to go. We're gonna go check out this uh, historical site. Like I said, we've been here once, but it's been a long time. So I figured I'd take you guys along with, and we'll go check it out. It's pretty cool. All right, walking from the campsite. We're almost there. It's not too far. It's about five, 600 yards. This is just like, it's just crazy. We're out in the middle of the desert. And you have all these like crazy old, crazy old huts out here. And I'm not the most knowledgeable about this place, so I have to do some research and I'll uh, go over a little more in depth, but kind of show you everything and take you through some of the, uh, the sites here. This is just crazy. Fort Churchill was Nevada's first, largest, and most elaborate military outpost. It was active from July of 1860 through 1869. During this time, Fort Churchill helped to bring federal control over a quickly developing and resource-rich area that lacked effective government control. The troops stationed at Fort Churchill protected California-bound immigrants, safeguarded the Pony Express and telegraph lines, fought battles and skirmishes with local Native Americans, protected area settlements, intervened in miners' disputes, quelled any uprisings brought about by the Civil War. Fortunately, none of those will be around right now. Way too cold. It's 40 degrees right now, so... Those guys are long gone. Yo, this is crazy. These were the barracks. Check it out. This 
So this is crazy. Behind me are the barracks. This was part of the barracks. The mess hall was here, but uh, unfortunately, like I've stated, a lot of this stuff has been destroyed just over time with nature and people, I think, too, maybe. I'm not sure, but this was uh, the mess hall, like the kitchen kind of thing. But as you can see, there's nothing here. You can see there was a structure here at one point in time. Second barracks. Looks like we maybe have a few bigger buildings coming up. Even more barracks. And this was another mess hall on this side. So if that mess hall is missing. This one is still kind of here. And this was uh, more barracks. Wow. So there's like three sets at least. Nope, there's another fourth that was right next to it. I can see the sign right here. I wonder, maybe these are all barracks. They kind of look all the same, so. So this sign here says the living quarters for one company of approximately 100 men consisted of three buildings, two barracks, and combined mess hall kitchen. By October 1860, six barracks were up, but only partially finished and would remain this way for years. It also says, for the enlisted men, life at Fort Churchill was isolated and unpleasant. They, like I said, <laughs> were literally out in the middle of nowhere. And could you imagine in the 1800s out here? There's gonna be nobody for miles. They lived on a dirt floor barrack furnished with crude beds, chairs, ate a meager diet of beef, salt pork, bread, and coffee, and performed manual labor for $13 a month? Could be cents, but I think it says dollars. Recreation was largely limited to fishing on the river and drinking playing cards at the post store uh, or Buckland's station. I've always been fascinated by government and history uh, just since I was in high school, I think. I think government in, in high school was my favorite class. So this stuff just fascinates me, just history of our country and everything. And you're out in the middle of nowhere, which is pretty cool. Looks like we just have a couple more barracks on this side. Officers' quarters are uh, gone. Looks like a lot of the next few buildings are gone. And then the rest will be on that side. Two more, and then camp is that way. So, here we go. Officers' quarters building that is still here. It almost looks like a, like a duplex or a townhome where you have two living quarters right here and on the front end is kind of like the main living area. That's pretty cool though. Looks like maybe another one right here. Actually, that one, that one looks different. We'll go see what that one is. Yeah, another officer's quarters right next to each other. So that's crazy. That building right back there was the commander's office, which served as like a stop for the Pony Express, but also as a telegraph that notified these guys about big major events, including Lincoln's election and the start of the Civil War and Nevada's statehood. That's pretty wild because uh, Nevada was founded, the state was founded around this area at the time. This is just wild. This is the hospital. Crazy. So you have basically like hospital where they keep all the supplies, commander's office, officers like housing, and then all the barracks for all the soldiers and stuff right over there. On this big like rectangle kind of thing. I'm telling you, this is so cool, <laughs> this is crazy. All right, well that's all uh, the tour of all the buildings out here at Fort Churchill State Park. I'm at this last sign where it gives you a, kind of a drawing and a depiction of what everything they think looked like out here at Fort Churchill because it says there's no known photographs of Fort Churchill from its period and its operation. So I'll show you guys this picture right here and it depicts it, but it's so wild that we can be here in almost 2023 and this was going on in the 1800s. It's just, that kind of history to me is like super cool just to like be able to experience in, in real life and not just like watch it on a documentary or something. It's pretty cool. So this is epic. So freaking cool. Hopefully you guys enjoy this stuff too. I know this is kind of like different, but I figured since I was gonna be out here at this state park that I'd, I'd kind of show you guys a little bit of uh, its history too, but let's get back to camp now. Alrighty, while camp is uh, pretty much set up, there is a river over here. I am gonna try and go fish it. I, last time we were here, the water was way too low to be able to fish. So I don't really have my hopes up, but let's go check it out. 
got the GoPros geared up and ready to go just in case. Brought the fly rod. I did bring a spin rod just in case because there is the opportunity to actually catch some bass out here. So I'm gonna try the fly first. Hopefully either trout or bass on the fly would be sick. Any fish in general would be pretty sick. Uh, but yeah, let's hope the water's good enough and we can actually fish it and uh, we'll see. All right, off to go fishing. Camp spot's right there. I think we're just like 200 yards or so, maybe 150 up this little trail. Let's see if we can go find it. Hopefully the water's good, we'll see. Pretty sure the water should be right over here. Oh yep, I hear it. Oh my gosh. I think we are in luck. Oh my gosh. There's no way last time we were here, there was no water. Oh my gosh. I don't know how deep it is. I don't know how deep it is. Let's see if we can get closer. Oh my gosh, you guys, check this out. Okay, it's brown, it's not the prettiest, but this is fishable. And there might be bass in here, that'd be cool. So where I'm sitting right here is kind of like a little, almost a little eddy or like a little side hole under this bridge. So the river's flowing towards me and banking out past that way. So there might be some fish pooled up in here. Heck, I don't know. Let's see if we can do something here. There's not really a place for me to set my camera for a different angle, so we'll do the chesty. Hopefully we can hook in. I think I can get over here and we'll try this spot and then maybe move up over here if we have to. Oh, let's check it out. Let's see, I don't know if I can get across here without eating crap. Oh my gosh. How deep is that? Not very deep. Okay. Oh, now I really wish I would've brought my waders. I have no idea how deep this is. Okay, we're not very far out, but we're just checking it out, seeing if we're touching bottom. Let's try and get out there a little bit more. There we go. There's like so many currents in here, it's crazy. I think we'll move up with the fly rod, but I'm gonna try the spinning rod. I just think it's too muddy down here for any trout, and I don't think this is what bass are gonna eat. So, let's try the spinning rod. Spinner on here. Well, my guess is after the, the snow and rain last night that it's just too muddy and kind of overflowed and the fish are just, just trying to adjust, so they're not cooperating. But let's go back to camp for now. Right on, all right, we are back at camp and I've got some of the stoves out, or the stove out and some of the food out, so it is time to cook our chicken stir fry. Now, I've cooked stir fry before, but never really like this with all these ingredients, so let's hope it's pretty good, we'll see. Noodles first. Okie dokie. Stir fry noodles. This is what I have. I've had these before, I really like these. So, we will go ahead and cut this bag open. And we'll do some of these. Let's maybe break these bags in half. Not exactly sure how many we'll do. Break some in half and leave some full. Let's do a little bit more. Why not? So this cook stove basically has high and off. So it boils really quick, but I had to turn it off to get the noodles in there. 
go ahead and boil those and then do the rest of the food. Gonna cut up the chicken. Juicy guy out. Right there. So I am working with limited supplies. The camper van is winterized, which means I cannot use any water out of it. So I brought bottled water, I have a jug of water, but it's like washing your hands and the dishes and all that. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult on this trip, but that's okay. We're still enjoying it. We just cut up the chicken into some slices. We've got a carrot, a pepper, and some broccoli that we'll throw in there as well. And we also have all of our sesame oil, we've got our honey, we've got soy sauce, I've got some red pepper flakes we're gonna throw in there. It's gonna be pretty dang good. Noodles are looking good. Let's see if I can strain it first. Oh, look at that. This thing has a strainer. Perfect. Look at that. Chicken. Now the peppers. Just the broccoli. There we go. Chicken is looking good. These guys all in. Hopefully not spill them all. Hopefully not spill them all. Olive oil just to help. Oh yeah, that is looking so good already. Cornstarch and soy sauce. Uh, let's see here. Let's do honey first. All right, and it does not give me any like amount, so I am going to be guessing on this amount here. We'll do about that. Then it says the sesame oil. Oh, that smells good. We'll give it a little bit of that. Some soy sauce, love soy sauce. We'll give it some of that. So, I don't know how much to put in. Sorry guys, making a mess. So we will see here, making an absolute mess of it all. That cornstarch is making it like thicken up though. And that is actually looking really good. I don't know why, but I feel like I should add a little more soy sauce. Oh man, this is actually looking so good. <laughs> okay, I think it is time to add the noodles. Oh, they're stuck. It seriously smells so good. And I ended up forgetting peppers, so I did add a little bit after I turned the camera off. But let's add a little bit more, because why not? Guys, I'm seriously so excited. This looks so good. Guys, this is looking so good. I think it's ready. I'm gonna turn it off. And this is really the only bowl I got, so. All right, we got the stir fry. Man, this seriously looks so freaking good. And it's nice and chilly out, so this is like gonna be delicious. It is kind of eerie out because there's like literally nobody camped out here and it's pitch black. 
So I have my van light on, but I can't see anything within like 20 feet around me. Very kind of eerie. Oh. Wow, it's hot. It's so hot. Whew. Okay. First impression, very good. Not as much spice as I wanted. Or expecting. But let's let's try another one. Super good, but still, I think use more spice. I don't know what I did different, or I didn't, I wonder what I did wrong. Maybe it needs more, let's add a little bell, bell peppers. I just like, I like spicy food, ex especially for Thai food, so maybe I didn't mix it up enough. Let's get some chicken in there too. Mmm, some more veggies, some chicken in there. Oh yeah, that's much better. That is much better. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Much better. I think adding the bell peppers is a, a good, is clutch. Let's not be too shy. Now like I said, I've made stir fry at home, but I don't think ever with this kind of ingredients, I think I've been like a pansy and did like chicken, some veggies and like some soy sauce and that's it. So this is the first time I really got some of the extra ingredients, the peppers and the sesame oil or sesame seed oil or whatever it is. It is very good. And cornstarch, never done that. Mm. Man, that is good. Oh, this is gonna be great. All right, well, I'm gonna enjoy this. And we'll see you by the campfire in just a few minutes. just like that dinner is done and the fire is going gonna sit here relax enjoy the fire and just uh, kind of hang out for a little bit get inside get some sleep and uh, we'll see you guys in the morning well good morning everybody uh, look at this not the uh, place that I was at or that you guys probably thought um, so the thing is, I filmed this video, I was editing it, and at home, started to finish all the editing. We ended up coming up here to a friend's house, and I realized I did not have the last part uploaded to my computer to finish out this video. So, it was basically just woke up in the morning, had some coffee, said thanks to you guys for watching, and headed out. So, I wanted to just say, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please smash a thumbs up, because that really helps the channel. Uh, we want this channel to take off, so please keep watching. I appreciate all your support, and you guys know the drill. We'll see you in the next one.